Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having an amazing evening so far. I wanted to make a video on the topic of reamping. Um, and yeah, the reasons for this are that we have a ton of new members in the community. Welcome, by the way. And a lot of you guys are asking how you can contribute to the NAM model community and how you can reamp your stuff. So I thought, okay, I'm up for the challenge. I'm going to make a quick video on how, not, not a quick video, this is going to take longer. Sorry for that, by the way. Um, yeah, but I said to myself, okay, let's make a video around this and let's focus, in my case, particularly on small interfaces. What I mean by that is interfaces which have a maximum of two input channels and two output channels. This over here is the Line 6 UX2. This is a quite old interface, which in fact has more than two inputs, but you only can use two of them at the same time via the software but it in fact only has two outputs and that makes it a perfect candidate to show you guys how to reamp in case you have, for example, the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 or if you have a Steinberg U22R or something, I think also has only two outputs. So that's an interesting experiment, explanation, whatever to conduct so far. Before we do that, I want to talk very briefly about what reamping is, what components are involved, how we set up the physical stuff, and then we move on to how we uh, set up Reaper in order to do so. So reamping basically, the concept behind that is that you record a clean guitar DI track, and after doing the recording, you can send that audio out of your interface into an analog rig and kind of re-record that, let's say, reamped sound back into your interface, hence the name reamping. Um, you will need a few core components in order to kind of get this running. Um, but before we talk about that, why is reamping important for us over here at, at the NAM community? The reason is that all of the profile and capturing, whatever you want to call it, works this way. You have some sort of reference file and you are reamping that through your signal chain and then you're doing through neural networking, through AI, machine learning, whatever, you're doing a comparison between those two signals, the reference file and your re-recorded signal. And through the neural networking, the difference is measured between what is the reference file and the recorded signal. And then a blueprint is created and this blueprint is kind of clouded around everything which you play with your guitar and that is the reamped sound so it's kind of smacked on top of your uh, clean playing and that's how the magic happens like super simplified in order to get reamping right you need a certain signal flow especially with these interfaces let's talk about the signal flow and then about the components which are in the reamping chain first off you would let me change the camera for this over here I got this interface. Yes, I have two of them. <laughs> um, I got some cables lying over here. It will become apparent what is what when I plug them in. So the first thing is the guitar has to go into the interface into some sort of instrument input or something. After that, you will send out your guitar track to the amplification chain so you will do that out of one of the outputs over here. Next up, after everything has run through the amplification chain, it will come back to the interface to be once again recorded. And after you got the recorded signal, you want to also listen to it. So what you might want to do is you want to connect one of your speakers, your monitor speakers, to the other remaining output of the interface. Okay, this is kind of the cabling which I got set up. From a level perspective, this volume, like the volume of the interface, should always be kind of maxed out so that you have no signal loss because the volume is not boosting the signal, it's actually taking volume from, from the loudest peak away. So we want to get that boosted so we get a nice, good signal. That also means that you have to make sure that your monitor speakers are set to a volume which 
doesn't damage your ears if there's any sort of feedback or something. I recommend making it fairly low volume so that you don't get any damaging on your hearing. So please take that into consideration. I've done that mistake often enough. All right, let's talk about the reamplification chain. There are some elements which I personally would say are mandatory um, to get a proper reamping. So no buzzing, no ground issues, no, no hum, no feedback, no sizzle. The first is between the interface and the amplifier, you want to use a reamping box of any sorts. I'm using the polymer decouple. What that does is, whenever we send out a signal out of the interface output, that's going to be line level. Line level, when you plug that into a guitar interface, or sorry, into a guitar amplifier, you will have some sort of signal loss, signal quality loss, signal degradation. It won't sound good. So, and uh, the reamping box basically takes this signal and, and kind of prepares it so that it's very much akin to what a guitar would sound like when you're playing that. It has to do with impedance, so it's raising the impedance of uh, that particular signal so that it pushes the amp in the right way a guitar would. Then you go into your, your analog um, rig, so to speak. In my case, I'm doing that through an MXR boost and then going into my Bugera. After that, you have two possibilities. You could, in theory, go from the amplifier to the cabinet and then take a mic'd up signal and, put, and feed that back into your interface. That's the typical reamping scenario. There's also a second scenario. Um, a lot of us out there want to use our own impulse responses. We don't want to be stuck with the cab somebody just recorded. Maybe he didn't do it the right way or whatever. Or, um, so what we're doing over here is we have a load box. A load box is basically exactly what it, what the name implies. It takes the load of the amplifier instead of the cabinet and it prepares you a line input ready signal from your amplifier. So basically you're now having kind of a, a clean sound, not clean in terms of no distortion, but a sound which only has your uh, which only has your pedal, or in my case, the pedal and the amplifier, kind of as an isolated sound clip, instead of having the cabinet also mixed up in the signal chain. And that then, this line out goes into my interface over here, into a mic input that's, uh, that's reasoned uh, within, the, within the software for my interface. And here, the mic input, I set that always to zero, to have zero coloration from the microphone preamp. Um, it works fairly good on this interface and I would assume it works also very well for others. So if you have a Focusrite Scarlett, don't touch that air button or something. Leave it first with zero gain. See if you have to kind of raise the levels and then move from there on forward. All right, let's move forward here to my PC monitor over here. I have done the routing on the program for my interface. It's Line 6 Pot Farm. So here I defined that my first input is my instrument input, which I have over here. The second one is my mic input, and I'm sending them to different sends. One and two being the instrument, three and four being the mic input or the reamping input. And I already have Reaper prepared so that we can directly talk about how to set up stuff so you can monitor, you can record, and so on and so forth. How you would capture, basically. Now, you first want to make a track which you would call guitar input, or anything in that sort. You want to have it on send one, yeah, so that's crucial. What is now super, super, super important is that you want to pan this particular channel to exactly the output where your um, where your signal is going to your reamping chain, yeah. So I want to push this to the complete right side of the of the sing of my interface, so that I don't have any of that signal which is coming from the guitar going to my monitor setup. The reason for this is um, we want to avoid feedback loops. And so that's super crucial for this setup, yeah? 
then everything goes through the reampling reamplification chain, comes back over here into the interface, and that would be our channel, which is using send three as the input, because I defined it over here. Send three is the microphone input, yeah, or the microphone channel input, which we are abusing for our reamping purposes. This is now my reamping input. <coughs> so this over here, on the other hand, I want to have into the exact opposite direction, fully panned. The reason for this becomes apparent if you think about it. Just imagine I would have it in the center and I would record. What would happen is, and even, even worse, I would have the monitoring on, let's say. What would then happen is, you send the guitar signal out of your right output that goes through the amplification chain back into the instrument input. Now you have it panned as a center and you have the monitoring on. So that already distorted signal will again go through the right output back into the amplification chain, come back, go back out of the right output into the, so you get a feedback loop. Yeah. And that sounds horrible, horrible, and it's super loud. Maybe I'm gonna, I might tinker around with making a very short demo of how screechingly loud and horrendous that is. So make the fuck sure, sorry, but make sure that you have this panned 100% left. All right. Now, what I like to do is I like to copy this track I click over here, right on Reaper and uh, the record button. And then I say record, disable input monitoring only. There's a specific reason to that, which I will explain in a moment. So I've now armed all the tracks so that they're recording. I am gonna, rec I'm gonna set the record monitoring on for the guitar. So the guitar while I play it live really is in fact showing over here and is sent out of the interface. And um, yeah, I will do the same for this track. All right, no feedback. Maybe you can hear the hiss. Hopefully you can hear that hiss very quiet. That's the hiss now from the reamping. The reason why I'm doing this extra third track is the following. I want to listen to what I'm playing. So I'm going to smack an impulse response on this and not bother at all what is actually happening with my recorded track. So I don't have to mess around with my recorded track. When I bounce that later off, I have a clean signal, but I still get my monitoring. So that's the thought process behind it. Now, everything should work fairly well. Let me grab my guitar and demonstrate it. Let me just out of, uh, for, for shits and giggles, uh, engage all the pedals. This is without any pedals. This is with one pedal. This is with two pedals. All right. So we now have a working reamping chain. Now, what is this capturing all, all about? Yeah, so this is just a live reamping chain. This allows you to set up the sound you like, uh, to set the amplifier the way you like it. And then we're gonna actually proceed with the actual capturing stuff. And that is the following. You wanna disarm the guitar and yeah, I wanna disarm also the monitoring track. So I only got the reamping track actually engaged, still recording. You wanna now go ahead and take this reference file which is also which is called v111 you want to smack that into the track where you were previously recording your live guitar and 
you then want to record. Let me hang on. Wait a minute. Let me show you the actual signal. So you want to record basically this reference file through your reamping rig. I'm gonna. I as you've seen, I've set the recording on so that we can hear that. Let me turn off the the impulse reloader so you can hear what this signal actually sounds like. You kind of get the idea. And this is the beauty of how I set things up over here. I can monitor this track over here without affecting anything in regards of the, um, the actual recording track. So that makes it very easy for me to not make the mistake to uh, unintentionally disarm the track or do anything wrong in that sense. And you would now go ahead, you would fully record this reference file through the reamping chain. You would take the, uh, the recorded file, like this, this channel as a solo channel. You would export it as a mono um, 48,000 uh, hertz or 48 kilohertz um, signal. And then you would do the training in some shape or form. I wanted to show you why it's so important that we keep these kind of, let's say, pannings the way we do it. Yeah. Let me show you what ha would happen if I would mess around with that and do a mistake. So you can currently hear the hissing, right? Let me move this very slightly. Ah, oh, wait a minute. As soon, as soon as I move this monitoring track, which is actually sending something out to the loudspeakers, as soon as I send that only a tiny, tiny little bit to the wrong direction, I immediately, <laughs> sorry, I immediately get some feedback. And that is why it's so absolutely crucial that you take care that you take this, let's say, panning serious and that you make sure that your loudspeakers are not blasting at full volume because you will get some sort of hearing damage. I don't want to be responsible for that. Anyhow, I think, wow, this, this video took nearly 20 minutes. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm talking so much bullshit out of, uh, in the middle of the night. Okay, um, I hope that this, wait a minute. Let me take that hiss away because that's super annoying. I hope this kind of helped you to kind of grasp the concept behind reamping, and um, yeah, uh, I hope this enables you to make your own captures, to contribute to the NAM community. I saw a lot of you guys out there have amazing rigs, and yeah, it would be a shame if we could not um, get them all somehow as models here in the NAM community. So, yeah, what else to say then? Thank you for watching. If you took it over here up to the stage, then absolutely graceful. Uh, um, appreciate that. If there are any questions, leave them down in the comments below. We all in the community are trying our best to be super helpful and to help each other out um, and to not be toxic douches. And so I really appreciate that. And with that said, Get some models crack in. Happy evening and keep it metal. Bye-bye.